for the tournament. So in some ways, this could be a preview. This could be a preview of a match we see in December. This is a very important chance for these two to test the mettle of each other. It's a very good point. You know, a lot of matches in VCW, there are very definite stakes, but this, almost for bragging rights and the ability to go into that tournament and show not just uh, the opponent they're standing across the ring from, but every competitor in that tournament that they're the one to look out for. Cowpoke Paul in December in that tournament will be continuing to prospect for gold while Remy LeVay, well, Remy LeVay has been desperate to belong and I think even more desperate to lead. And we have seen his friends in many dark places. I can't think of more two unlike wrestlers on the VCW roster than Remy LeVay and Cowpoke Paul in this matchup. And it almost makes what we're gonna see in this contest a little unpredictable. Well, I know preparing for this tournament has been very important to Cowpoke Paul. He has been doing a lot of extra training at the Barnon Dude Ranch, known for years as a, a very impressive ranch and a very impressive training facility. Remy LeVay with a hold of the ropes. And I've been told some big news. We're actually trending on Fight TV, VCW on Fight. Thank you all for joining us for this first event here on Fight TV. Yeah, continue to use the hashtag VCW on Fight as we show the world what McMechan, West Virginia, has known for this entire year. You don't get action like this elsewhere as the Yeehaw Kid, Cowpoke Paul, looking to escape the lasso of Remy LeVay. Sends Remy off into the ropes and a trip. The blue ribbon wrestler, Cowpoke Paul, showing all that skill in the ring that he's developed. Remy LeVay, definite experience advantage, a veteran about to start his 11th year in wrestling. Cowpoke Paul, under two, a prodigy, not just in wrestling, but in cowpoking. And almost that might be if Cowpoke Paul can pick up the victory, a, a bigger upset than anything else that he's had here in VCW with somebody like Remy LeVay, who, as you mentioned, is so experienced. That's very possible. I will say, I don't know if there's any bigger upset than defeating the Beast Man. That's but fair. Remy LeVay coming off the biggest win of his VCW career. Oh, wait a we got a lasso, we got a lasso. And he's got the origin running. He is herding cattle. Cowpoke Paul is going to wrestling and the origin are heading for the hills. We talked with Keith Hodd about how he was able to, you know, not handle this three on one issue with the origin, but. Now a game of tug of war and two. Oh. Well, two did beat one in tug of war. Unfortunately here for professional wrestling, different sport, different rules. Cowpoke Paul really so smart in that ring more than anything. That has to be a testament to how he's been able to overcome these challenges. But now being hoisted by his Ooh! own lasso, as they say. And Get when the human body meets steel, steel always wins 10 out of 10 times. Head first into that ring post, and that is solid head on steel. Oh, and then gets dropped with a back suplex right onto the apron. And now Cowpoke Paul has been introduced very personally to both hardest parts of the ring. The second hardest part, which is the apron, and the first hardest part, which is those steel posts. You may hear differently elsewhere, but I assure you this is the truth. That steel post, that's the hardest part of the ring. Not many people talk about that. No, it's, it's, it's underrepresented. But Remy LeVay, you mentioned the experience earlier, and able to take advantage of that moment to drive Cowpoke Paul into the ring post, was his experience at work, finding openings, finding opportunities, and taking them. LeVay has been in this business for 11 years and is only just finding himself. Is this the final form of Remy LeVay? Could this be the culmination of his journey? You know, we've seen this man over the last 10 years grow up in front of us, and unfortunately, we've had to see him oh. grow up to become this person. But a miscalculation there by Remy LeVay and Cowboy Paul taking advantage, tripping him, and sending him face first into the turnbuckle. 
Cowpoke Paul showing why he is a wrestler beyond his years, bringing the spirit of the West to the mountains of the East. And now, ooh, Paul gets sent out onto the apron. What could he be thinking here? Oh, no! He's not thinking anything. His mind just got erased by Remy LeVay. And this can't be good! Cowpoke Paul getting driven head first into the mat. Cover, hook of the leg. Well, whether it's good or bad is all a matter of perspective. Very good for the origin. We already saw Christian Noir defeat Bearcat Keith Hout. You know, the leader, the undisputed leader. This is not a, a group of equals in the origin. Remy LeVay definitely in control. He does not want to lose in front of his followers. And look at Cowpoke Paul seeing Christian Noir on the outside. Well, we talked about having eyes in the back of your head, and uh, maybe that's not necessarily literally true, but being a cowpoke, you got to keep track of a lot of cattle, and I think that kind of sensory awareness, that proprioception is coming in handy for Cowpoke Paul here in the ring. That's Pro a yeah, proprioception, that is a sense not often discussed in pro wrestling. But you make a very fair point, you know, you're not hurting a cow, you're hurting... Many cows. Oh! Certainly more than three, and that gives Cowpoke Paul more of an advantage in this situation than a lot of wrestlers would have. Paul looking to take advantage. Oh, but Remy LeVay, smart, trying to block Cowpoke Paul taking him over and now gets hold of him into a backbreaker. Remy LeVay loves to do damage, grabs the leg, and Cowpoke Paul fighting from behind at this point. LeVay thinks maybe, maybe Poke was a little too winded. Cowpoke Paul, this is where that tenacity, this is where that ability to fight back and pull from within comes into play. And if Cowpoke Paul can keep that momentum going like he has been in, in previous contests, you know, obviously he's not the favorite going into this tournament just on paper, but... He may well be the fan favorite, though. The Yeehaw Kid has done a great job of wrangling up some crowd support across this year. Now a series of shots. Ducks one from Remy LeVay. Cowpoke Paul. Ooh, big atomic drop. And now looking to take advantage off the ropes. Looking for big iron, but Remy LeVay with that sling blade. And driving Cowpoke Paul hard into, hard into the mat, right into the cover. Great job by Remy LeVay just immediately rolling over, draping his arm, not letting a moment pass without forcing Cowpoke Paul to expend some kind of energy. That's the veteran instinct you only get 10 years deep into professional wrestling. Remy though, that sling blade not able to put Cowpoke Paul away and he needs to find something else in his arsenal. Brings him on possibly backpack stutter. Cowpoke Paul climbing the mountain that is Remy LeVay though and then Sitting down for safer ground through the legs. Rolls through. Oh, could this be? There's that saddle up stutter. Cowpoke Paul, maybe back oh, to the Oh, wait a minute. Malachi Gage on the apron. The shot, the sideshow psycho gets what's coming, but the damage may have already been done. And right in front of the referee, Christian Noir. And that's going to be an instant disqualification. The origin couldn't risk the humiliation of defeat for Remy LeVay going into this tournament. So we don't know. We don't know 100% what would have happened. But I certainly think Cowpoke Paul was going to take this win even without this disqualification. I think you're exactly right, Jason. The embarrassment of losing to someone like Cowpoke Paul. Oh, no. And now he's going to think that backpack stunner again. And Remy LeVay and the Origin sending a message not only to Cowpoke Paul, but to every member of the tournament. Remy LeVay is coming to be the first VCW heavyweight champion, and he's not coming alone. And you get to sit here with me to call this clash. As mentioned, it should be noted that Chris LaRusso was the original trainer of Gannon Jones Jr. Conversely, Brandon Kay was the original trainer of Duke Davis. And that Union Town Yokel that just took his shirt off should sit down because he is not on the caliber 
of any of these four athletes in the ring. Now here's my thing. You, you think Duke Davis and Gannon Jones felt left out that they weren't inside of the tournament? Well, that's kind of the genesis of this matchup. Yeah. Uh, Brandon K claims that he has one year left in a, of active competition. He looks to take 2023 20, to be the year that he will have all the matches that he wants to have before he hangs it up. He wanted a matchup with the main event. The main event said, let's do it in November. Let's do it before 2023 gets here. And again, trainer versus student Chris LaRusso, a nearly 20 year pro himself. LaRusso started at the age of 18 years old in 2003 and has won championships everywhere he's competed from Pittsburgh to Central Pennsylvania, out through Ohio, LaRusso has seen success everywhere he's gone. It may not have always been by the book, but he's made it happen. I don't mean to interrupt you. If you listen, Chris is like, do you remember this third training? He's still coaching him a little bit. Just asking if he has those reminders. Yeah, wrist lock here. Gannon trying to use his height advantage to extricate himself, and he does top wrist lock and again this is where Gannon can use that height advantage for the extra leverage. Now there's a lot of different dichotomies, a lot of different stories happening in this matchup. LaRusso has taken on as I mentioned a ton of office work behind the scenes here at Rise. To my knowledge has not been competing regularly so will there be any ring rust for the heir apparent who uses the hair for an advantage here. Maybe old habits will die hard for LaRusso. Oh. But what agility from Cannon Jones. Nipping up at his height is really just incredible athleticism. Cannon again using his size advantage, puts on the brakes. Two oh. feet in the chest by LaRusso, only rocks Cannon, oh. who returns in kind. I defy you to find someone that big that can move like that. Cannon Jones Jr., clearly a special athlete. Oh. Oh. And what agility from LaRusso, but it may come back to bite him. Oh. And right now, the student quite literally wrestling circles around the trainer, but LaRusso returns the favor. Landed a super kick right on the butt. And Ginnon is rocked. Look at it. He can't keep his balance. And this matchup is as evenly matched as we thought it would be. Coming into this match, did you have a favorite, Jim? Oh, I didn't know who to pick for this one, Tad. <laughs> I'd I call this one even money because LaRusso and Brandon have the experience advantage when it comes to physical tools. They're, the, the main event are second to absolutely no other team anywhere inside or outside of Pittsburgh. And the metahuman is just a different type of athlete, man. He is shrugging, shrugging off those shots. Look. And Kate just said, hey, remember, we're still friends here. I don't know if that's going to stop Duke Davis once he gets that game face on. <laughs> I don't care who you are. Hey, remember, it's all tactic. It's all tactic. Oh. And again, the power of the metahuman puts the brakes on for Brandon K. Leverage maneuver from K. Oh. Duke hangs on, gets clocked with a right hand. Very precarious position on the apron here for the metahuman. I've seen this look in Kay's face before. I... Brandon charges, oh. takes Duke out. And speaking of that look that you've seen in his eye, I know you're very close with Brandon Kay. I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, make you feel like you have to reveal anything here, but what is Brandon's mindset going into his last year as a professional wrestler? You know, Kane wants to give it all out on the line, you know, being really close to him, being a tag partner, he wants to give every ounce that he got and give it out to Pittsburgh. He's, he loves what he does. Oh, hold on, wait a minute. It, and it's gonna take two men, but they get the metahuman to the canvas. They finally get him. But Kane wants to give and a double drop kick. And it took a pair of drop kicks to get the metahuman to the floor, but in comes Gannon. Low bridge sends the pro wrestling all-star to the floor. Now see, this is, 
Well, this Russo is... and Brandon are going to have to take a chance if they want to make their mark here. Oh, oh, see, this is where it, it tends to bite down. And Kate drop kicks him. And again, it took two men to make it happen, but they put the main event down. And Brandon could be taking a chance. We know that no one loves Rise more than Brandon K. Through the hard times, Brandon K has wanted Rise to flourish. And we know that Brandon will take a chance for his promotion. Oh, and Duke catching LaRusso. LaRusso got caught, and this could be ugly for uh, the heir apparent. Oh my what God. What power from Gannon. Inside out. LaRusso seeing stars. Duke went for the cover. LaRusso escaped. We know that you don't have a nearly 20 year career like LaRusso without being able to take the, take the hits, but that was a hell of a hit that he just took right there being suplexed in like that. And you hear a kid on the side telling LaRusso, hey, you need a kick, come on, I'm trying to get him up. You heard that. The sound tells you the story. LaRusso hits hard. Oh, yeah. And gets sandwiched in the corner. The level of how physically imposing the main event are cannot be understated. Oh. Textbook trademark offense from the main event. And I believe it may have been Brandon's encouragement reviving LaRusso to let him know you gotta get that, that shoulder up because we know LaRusso was seeing stars after that junction of this matchup. I don't know how much more LaRusso got, but here's the thing is I know both of these guys don't like to quit. The crowd's starting to get behind with Chris LaRusso. Listen to yeah, that. when LaRusso took an office job at the beginning of this year, I bet you he didn't see himself a week before Thanksgiving <laughs> in the ring with the main event. <laughs> and I'm sure none of these guys, hold it. Hold it. And this stop? time, Brandon had to make the save. That shows you that the offense of the main event is clearly wearing LaRusso down. And there's no shame in that because that's a hell of an offensive playbook the main event has. <laughs> yeah. You know, they got options, they got they got everything in their back pocket. And these guys are leverage oh. maneuver from LaRusso, shoulders down. Oh! And LaRusso got clotheslined out of his shoes. <laughs> and I believe the main event just called an audible here when they made a tag to uh to Duke Davis. Oh, look out. Oh, okay, low bridge and Gannon. Oh. Gannon uh, hit the floor very hard. LaRusso out the back door. Oh. But LaRusso's caught, I don't know. Gannon hit the floor very, very hard. We heard that impact, knee strike from LaRusso buying him some time. Turnabout fair play, it's LaRusso with the neck breaker. Gannon on the floor favoring his shoulder. This could be a pivotal point in this contest here, Tad. All it takes is one tag, one fire up just to change the momentum of this match. Can LaRusso make the tag? He does. In comes Brandon and Gannon. I believe Duke is still the legal man. It looks like Kay's been studying his playbook. The savvy veteran knows all the tricks of the trade, and he may need every single one of them in this matchup against this caliber of a tag team. Down goes Duke, and you don't say that often. No, you do not. Some trademark Brandon K offense oh, here. Are we gonna see? There it is, it's a super kick. Goes for the cover. Duke using those long arms to get his shoulder up. And Brandon may have to finish the uh, latter half of this matchup by himself because LaRusso looks worse for wear on the ring apron. You can't blame him. 
But the Russo just, I believe, just tagged himself in. That's a blind tag. Duke doesn't see it. The opportunistic LaRusso looking for an opening here. Blockbuster from Gannon. But Gannon doesn't know that LaRusso is legal. He sees him now. Missile drop kick. I wouldn't turn my back, Chris. Oh. Whoa! And what? LaRusso still has that agility. <laughs> oh my goodness. Diving ace crusher. He may be office, but he could still go in the ring, man. I'll tell you that. Oh, listen to that. And referee Rep. Nick Brown out of position. Just be, You can't blame Nick Brown for that. There's just so many bodies in there. Nick Brown was doing his job getting Brandon K out of the ring onto the apron. You're right, you know, that's a little bit of distraction, you know. That's, that last little second could have been that second that could have had that match won. And the tandem offense from LaRusso and Brandon K could be pivotal here. They're on fire right now. What? Oh. Look out, diving oh. European uppercut by LaRusso. Bodies flying everywhere. Oh. oh! And the Russo got planted. Good night. And that that quick, that impactful. Wow. It was a barn burner contest, but the margin for error was razor, razor thin. Just one small slip from Maruso, and he was put down by the main event. On a night where we are showcasing tag team wrestling, we just saw a hell of a tag team exhibition. Look at the respect between everybody, even they're in a hard fight that you just released. Last year in the game, give it up for Brandy K. The founder of Rise, Brandon K, getting that acknowledgement. But the bottom line is one more example as to why. The main event are the top tier talent. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. opposite sides of the spectrum here. Well, is it really opposite? One likes to party and one likes to party in the in the courtroom. So, I mean... Party in the courtroom? More like put partiers away from the courtroom. Well, when you get million dollar settlements, that is a party. Yeah, you got a point there. I mean, I've seen the man's boat. It's amazing. Which one? The first one or the second one? He has two? He has a backup boat. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so Futuristic and McBride taking on Lawless and Rumham. Lawless and Runham, you know, trying to form together to stop the injustice, which is within the 2PW locker room. They both feel that way. I mean, you know, it's an argument. Let it go. Um, but both of these guys, Lawless and Runham, both uh, suffering a loss last month. So, wow, this is already getting heating. And you notice Runham and Lawless drew the uh, corner closest to some of these fans, and they are giving them the lip services this match is officially started and here we go oh wait wait put the oh and there goes Corey futuristic which he's known to be a dancer i mean that has dancing is a loose dancing is a very loose term when it comes to Corey futuristic loose move, term move set i mean it's, the man has uh, you know moves like shut up there's, there's, now these guys uh, walking up here and now lawless putting him in his that putting him in the opposite corner there 
Okay, he has the count to five here, and he breaks the hole. Oh, look, uh, what, what, Lawless actually wow, getting in on it. Little. I guess that's how you do it, and now Rumham tagged in here. That was a tag. That was a tag. But it does, I don't think it was a purple, purposeful tag. I think now it was, he was a high five. At, yeah, it was. He put it at the wrist. Um, now these two locking up again. CJ Cessation right on top of things, as always. And now, oh, now Futuristic now taking a page out of Lawless's book. A little less rhythm. A uh, little less rhythm? Making, making some pizza, I guess. Rumham's really getting triggered over here. I could use that word. Thank you. I'm licensed. But right now. Oh, he's asking for Rumham to come in here. Are we going to see what I think we're going to have? I don't know. You don't want to get too... Uh, if, There's especially a Especially from Jersey, you don't want to get too close to an STD. Then again, they're everywhere there. Is this what an argument over the best dancers? Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh no. no. Yes, T Tony, I'll tell you what. Why, is, wh why this song? Why is this always the song? Hold on. This song always ends badly. I, I, Bronco is just shaking his head right now. This is the first time I've actually agreed with Bronco. This is just... <laughs> oh, misses that clothesline. Now has a hip toss on Beauty. And Corey Futuristic now getting things really started here with J.J. Rum Rumham. And uh, I'm going to take it. J.J. lost that dance battle. And oh, my goodness. Reverse rush leg sweep. One, two, and only a two count. Right now, Corey Futuristic on top of things. Ooh. What a kick to the spine on that one. Now picking him up and going over. And yes, Bronco McBride has been tagged in. Who looks extra pissed off because we took the dance break. That's right. And right now, Bronco McBride taking him in that corner. Has him. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. And, oh, and our first plate of chops served right here tonight, November Pain 2. Oh, well, we're going to go ahead and let the crowd handle it. Hey, they can count. Well, I mean, okay, I'm not going to go there. Oh, Rumham, face first to the mat. Doesn't even know where the heck he is right now. Then again, when you get punched by... Oh, oh, oh wait. He did know where he was. But you know what? That eye poke, what a save by Rumham. I mean, a little bit illegal, but hey, what are you going to do? And right now, speaking of legal, the gavel, David Wallace tagged with a big right hand. My goodness, he just walloped Rumham yeah, with that one. Dropped the gavel on him, so to speak. And right now... Lawless sends him into the ropes. Misses that clothesline. Here comes Bronco. Clothesline of his own. A flying one, that is. My goodness. Now has him in the opposite corner. There goes Lawless. Here comes Bronco. Big clothesline opposite corner. And now, guess we're going to handle it again here. Go ahead, Worthington. That's wow. more than 10. That is definitely more than 10. They got a little confused on that, but then again, he was swinging for the fences on that one. So it was... And Lawless now laying there completely out. He could be going for a pin right now, Tony. I don't think. First of all, Bronco knows well enough that he's not going to pin David Lawless with 10 punches to the face. He knows he has to work him down more as he tags in Corey Futuristic. Now, looks like double going, team action. Maybe. Has him up. Double suplex and the beauty. And Tony, my God. You heard Lawless's back hit that one. Oh, Senton. And now Futuristic in control here. What's next? One. Two and only a two count. See, Rumham was about to jump in there. He didn't though. He didn't. Burn, he didn't burn that bridge. But you know, credit to Futuristic and Bronco. They have really had a very organized style right now. Using and oh, speaking of organized, Rumham sticking that knee into the spine of Corey. Why did you interrupt me? I was giving credit to Corey, but while I was giving credit, commentators curse. Wallace now on the offense. He must have turned that around. Now choking him on that bottom rope. Yeah, he has still five. I was. Yep. Yeah, still five. You're right, you're right. You're I know right. I'm right. I'm always right. I wouldn't go there, but hey. Ben caught one. Only a one count. One and a half, two count. Something around there. But Lawless now very much in control and utilizing his corner effectively, putting uh, Corey Futuristic into the death corner. And now Rumham and Lawless are tearing apart Futuristic, which is probably the smart move. Of the two competitors, I would rather wrestle Corey Futuristic, despite the fact that he is a tag team uh, champion, former tag team champion. Bronco McBride's insane. Yes, he is. And oh my goodness, Rumham with that suplex. I mean, he just whipped Futuristic over one. Only a one and a half. No, two count. That was a two count. That was right. a two count. Now, Corey Futuristic, you know he's a tough SOB because he has been in some brutal matches. Just like Bronco McBride. While Bronco McBride's been in the pasta death match, uh, 
Bronco was, and the, the thing is, the STDs are always the ones involved with when it comes to weapons and plunder. But then again, we see Bronco McBride with skewers. I mean, Barbed Wire, everything you can imagine. And oh my goodness, Rumham just sending for that that off. Remember, corner. Futuristic is still feeling the effects of a couple months ago in that Lego deathmatch we had. Yes, I mean, my God, there was bodies and blocks everywhere. And big right, tag right there, the Wallace. Oh, big chop by Rumham. And now these two, a little bit of double team action. Let's see how well these guys can coexist. Sends a gavel, charging. Oh my goodness, he's guilty and now executed by Rumham. My goodness, futuristic now on the mat. Here comes Lawless, big leg drop. My goodness, the gavel, did you see that leg hit the throat of futuristic? Only a two count, only a two count. I'm surprised he got up from that one, Tony. I am too, but Corey Futuristic now in a situation of hurt. And he is in, he's stuck in that, that choke hold right there really hard. That, that, front headlock is really squeezing the life from him and he is facing the wrong direction he needs to get over the bronco looks like he's trying to do it though i mean they're doing the, they're doing the smart thing tony they're keeping futuristic away from that corner and big clothesline by lawless again bad choice and just stabilizing him one two and only a two count bad choice right there by futuristic to go for the offensive move instead of trying to get over the bronco because it keeps Corey in that corner, that death corner. They just keep pounding away on him, Tony. I don't know how much more Futuristic can take of this, especially, oh my goodness, and Rumham just taking matters in his own hands, just dropping on his head. One, only a two count. Credit to Corey. He is being very resilient, kicking out of these high bang moves. I mean, these are powerful moves. He's being driven into the mat with force. Right now, oh, look at this. Rumham now mocking. teasing, mocking. You do not want to mock Bronco McBride. We've seen a lot of people <laughs> become victims. No, Rumham, Rumham and Lawless, their biggest strategy is going to have to be to keep Bronco out of this match. And this is how they're going to do it, by like continuing to slam Corey Futuristic into the mat until he goes through it. Look at Rumham now, a little bit of push-ups there. One, two, I mean, I think he wasted time he wasted doing that. wasted some time. I will agree with you on that. If he would have went for the cover, I'm pretty sure he would have gone the three. As it was, he wanted to mock his... And he's fixated on Bronco. And Lawless is fighting with the crowd more. Small package, one, two, this could, oh, Futuristic trying to pull the, I wouldn't say upset, but you know, just a quick one there on Rumham. Almost had him. He almost had him, but he did not lock the inside cradle in there because of the angle he took there. Now thrown into the corner. And now look at this, Lawless choking Futuristic. And now Bronco trying to save his corner, but CJ Sensation's back is, is pretty much turned here. They, they're just running rampant on pure futuristic. Bronco needs to contain his temper right now. Well, My I, goodness. I, I mean, that's that's the problem with Death Proof is he has left a a playbook where you get him heated. He's not going to be focused as that big suplex drives Corey Futuristic in the mat. One, two, no. Only a two count to CJ Sensation. And you can see Lawless starting to get a little bit frustrated, frustrated here. I don't blame him. I mean, they have thrown everything but the book. A core futuristic, and he has just been able to kick out left and right. I mean, credit credit to futuristic, he is fighting this through, but you can tell he's starting to fade fast. The damage that's going on in his back, but he's trying to fight through it, elbow after elbow. And now big headbutt to the chest, and now futuristic has him. Wait, he has that foot now, and it's a curry and a beauty. But gets the tag. And now Futuristic so close to getting yep. tagged. No, Romham got that foot in the nick of time. And another Insiguri. Futuristic passes these out, like, unbelievably. Right now, can he catch it? Oh, no. And Lawless, did you see that stopping the tag? Oh, Romham now. Can he go for the pin here? No. Drove his face right into the mat right there with that reverse STO, almost a mic check. And now throws him into the corner. And now here we go. Lawless and Rumham playing smart tag team wrestling, as you call the death corner. And they are just keeping futuristic away from Bronco. Bronco's pulling his hair out basically right now. Salivating get in her back elbow though by Futuristic, stopping the double team action. Big boot. Futuristic to the second rope. Has it double flying body Roll press. Can it. he do it? Roll here it, it perfectly. Tags him in. Bronco's tag. Here he comes. Big run. Big clothesline. Taking both of them out. Back and forth he goes. This is why they call him Death Proof, folks. Kick to the midsection. The gavel in a little bit of trouble. And oh, big knee to the face. Leg Lariat right to the chest. One, two, and no. Rumham in the nick of time with the save. Oh, wait a minute. For futuristic set up for something. Duck under. Face breaker by Rumham. 
if he just accepts. Yeah, that's that's painful. But now it's two on one. It was been two on one, Tony. What I mean by two on one is these guys have been utilizing just tag team experience. I mean, Lawless, we've seen him adapt. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait. Send him into his own partner. Now, Bronco has both arms locked. Has him up. Oh, my goodness. How's your head? One, two, three. It's over. Bronco McBride and Corey Features and Victorious. Bronco McBride getting that victory right there. Doc, did you see that modified straight jacket brain buster he broke out there? My God, I mean, he tied both his arms up. The gavel had no way of getting away from it and just driving Lawless into the ground to get the three count. These two friends, I'm your pal in the mainstream media. And, and I'm the Riz. And you, you know, much. Riz, it takes years of strenuous, dedicated training before you're worthy to step inside a professional wrestling ring. But it takes even more time to develop complex, highly astute opinions about professional wrestling. Am I right? That is correct. Yes. And you know where we can find that? Yes. On a wrestling man. That's right. Angelic no more. This is the gory we know and we fear. And this is the gory that Project X probably doesn't want to face, but he is already saying, he's already heated. He doesn't want to be sprayed. He said he's not going to spray any uh, gory. You know, I, I want to know something, Tony. Maybe you might know it because sometimes you find out things before I do. Mm -hmm. Look at that armband. Look at that back patch on that vest. The culmination. Will we ever see them run rampant here in RWA? We've seen them run rampant quite a few other places that me and you were involved in. I mean, I know Gory's always planning. He always has something in his back pocket. Maybe we see the culmination. And if we do see the culmination in RWA, there's some uh, there's some dangerous things lurking in the shadows if the culmination come to light. But they are not here to my knowledge. And as Gory rolls about Oh, trying to get that quick pin. <laughs> hey, you got to be on your feet. You got to be on your toes. But I hate to say it, you have to be on your toes against Project X here. These two pushing back and forth. Here we go. And now what's Project X going to do here? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, let's roll. Oh, oh, my goodness. Did you see that leg takedown by Project X? Are you kidding me? That's not going to work. No. That's, 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 that was more of an insult than a pin attempt. But Gory's going to have to keep his head on a swivel, especially with the temptation Elijah Cruz on the outside. Elijah Cruz, definitive in Project Next win against Dan, Dan, Dan Weeds last, uh, last month here. Yeah, Sorry, sound like Pokey Pig there. Up and over. Oh, he's going for that hip toss, but wait a minute. Gory now has him locked in. Throws him over. One. Only a one. No, two count. Actually, excuse me. It was just barely a two count, but it was a two count. Now, Trying to hit those flying knees. Oh, I thought he was going for that clothesline where he keeps himself possible. locked in there. But Both right are now, possible. Gory now, that agility, just amazingness. But then again, Project X, when he comes to agility, oh, kicks him off. And Project X now, big nip up and a nip up by Gory. And look at these two, just not even taking their eyes off each other. Now, the West Newton faithful showing Project X why Gory is loved here in RWA. But it's also showing respect to Project X. There are very few people who are as agile as Gory is. One of them is Project X. This man is a freak. Athletic, strong, agility, out the wazoo. Charisma that is unmatched. These fans are idiots if they think Gory is going to kill him. He might win. Gory might win. But kill Project oh, X? But wait a minute. Project X is holding out his hand here. I don't know. Do you really want to put... I would not put my hand near Gory, but that's just me. Alright, I guess we're going to have a handshake I've, here. I've seen how this ends, Project X. You're not going to... Oh! Yeah. Tried it. He was trying. Oh my goodness. And one thing about Gory, he will bite you. He doesn't care who you are. Off the ropes. Oh, he's going for that arm drag. Arm drag. And, wow, look at the strength of Project X with that one. And now Gory up on his back, trying to get on his back here. And Gory now up. And oh no. Gory looking around. And oh, he's biting him. Bite him right on the head. Rightfully so. And right now, Project DQ rocks. Oh, come on now. Hurricanrana by Gory. Standing still, Hurricanrana. Amazing. Off the ropes. Comes Gory. Again with another one. That one running. My goodness. And Gory pulling everything out of the arsenal tonight. Oh, my goodness. Has him up. Just big monkey flip. My goodness. And a monkey flip. One, two, and no. Only a 
two count. But that's Project X in a nutshell. He ate all those barrages, still able to kick out. This kid, I'm not kidding when I say he's a genetic This is why Marvel. He is the current legacy champion in Eclipse. This is why this man is being looked at by everybody. This is why this man has a contract through Control Your Native. John, damn it, Elijah Cruz was on the outside, picks him up, puts him into the corner now, Project Man X. Him. My goodness, now Project X has him right where he wants him. And there is our first plate of chops served right here tonight at open season. Church, we love you. Well, I do. Yeah. And now has him up, drives him into that opposite corner. And right now, Project X taking advantage, but Gory's gonna have to keep his eyes on the outside. Elijah Cruz, you know, very well gets involved. Yeah, Elijah Cruz is no stranger to uh, bending the rules a little bit, but... And I mean, if you think about it, Tony, both these men, Gory and Project X, were both winners last month. Project X over the, the man of tomorrow, Daniel Ease, which is a huge barrier staple, you could say, a measuring stick in RWA. And of course, Gory getting a victory over Dia Salvador, who's no slot himself. Yeah, Diaz Salvador is very talented, but Project X beat our three-time RWA champion. Glory now throwing that kick right into his face, trying to get up. No, and now, did you see Project X just catching him in there, throws him that opposite corner. And Glory was going for maybe a high-angle DDT, but caught and thrown. And now, oh, big back elbow. I thought he was going to return to receive with the, uh, the second chop. The chop there, yeah, and another one, and just driving those elbows These are in. pinpoint elbows, Doc. These are pinpoint. He's aiming for that button on Glory's chin. Has dropped the suplex. He released. Yeah, released that. <laughs> My goodness. Unreal. Here comes Project S off the ropes. Low end clothesline. And Gory's down. Gory's usually going at the people. One, two, and no. Only a two count, says George Thunderbolt Ross. My what? goodness. What? George Thunderbolt Ross. No. We're anyway, Gory took that clothesline, that low angle clothesline right across the larynx and he is now, now he's choking him at that exact second, same spot. With that second rope now, but that big knee and he, he has to fly look, he If you look at Project X, he is just chiseled from stone so that's a bunch of strength behind this man. With every Michael, punch, every Michael kick. Michelangelo wishes he had the model that Project X could be. Could you imagine that statue in the Louvre, in the Smithsonian? In, in a Hall of Fame one day because the way this man is going right now, I mean, the way both these guys are, my goodness, and right now driving that size 14 right into the chest of Gory, my goodness. But he, he's the, the Elijah Cruz on the outside like a rabid dog, and now he's trying to just taunt Gory. Yeah, there, there's one person you're not going to play mind games with. That's definitely uh, the New Age plague, Jason Gory. And right now has him going for the suplex here. Has him up. Just drives him right down to the canvas. Planted him, too. And there's Elijah Dean. Oh, not Dean. Excuse me. Elijah Cruz. Apologies there. Elijah yes. Cruz has not interfered yet, but Taylor X now climbing to the top. He might, he might not need to. He doesn't point. need to. Project X is that damn good. To the top rope. Oh! Landed it! He just landed great on his feet. Holy shit! Double knee by Gory. And now Gory. Climbing it up. Has it. Ah! There it never that, gets old. There it is. There's that running close line you called. And right now, oh, misses the clothesline out, Gory. Oh, it's a great from the apron. Did you see him hold himself for, with that top rope? And now Gory going where he's most dangerous. Going for that springboard. Everywhere. Springboard drop kick drives it right into him. One, two, and no. Elijah Cruz was about did to jump not. in. He did not do that. He fidgeted, but he did not do anything. Project X kicked out at two. Give yeah, credit he to Project was about X. To shut up. In on that shut up, Doc. He was not. Shut up. Sends him up. Oh, he just catches him in midair. Project X now. Just showing him. Tosses him up. Swing around. DDT. Tornado. DDT. One. Two. No. My God. And Gory can't believe he kicked out. I can't believe he kicked out. That's nuts. My God. Gory just caught him. Unbelievably just caught him right where he... And now Gory going where he is, again, most dangerous, that top rope. Gory now climbing up here. Has him right where he's And now Elijah Cruz getting involved and grabbing him. Oh, yeah. Damn it, George, turn around. Oh, while you're docked, you want? Oh, God, Taylor Wait. has him over his shoulders. Catches him. Rolling has him. Oh, no. And now Project X to the top. Oh, oh my goodness. One, two, no! The corkscrew, and it just wasn't enough. 
corkscrew body press. I can't believe what I just see. Tony, Gordon kicked out of that, but man, all thanks to Elijah Cruz grabbing the foot of Gory. He's got to deliver that stop. I, I'm speechless. I'm speechless, Doc, to kick out of that corkscrew splash. And that was two and a half rotations. Yes, Project X can contort his body in midair like nobody he I've seen in this time. I swear to circle. God. I swear to God he stops time. Now has him over his shoulders. And that that fireman's carry. Gory with those elbows, though. Getting out of there. Big super kick by Gory. And look at that. Project X now off his feet. Oh, he went for a midsection. Went to block it at the top. Got caught in the middle. Oh, wait a minute. Murder ride! He's full. One, two, and oh, come on! George Ross put a count of three there. And damn it, Cruz on the top. Of I'll be honest. Here we go again. This is the power of Project X. And oh, wait a minute. Now he's just raking the eyes. He got the eyes of Gory. Come on, turn around. Damn it. George Ross absolutely inept here. Oh, he picks up Gory now. And Project X picks him up and catches him. Oh my goodness, Society Breaker, one, two, and three, damn it. And Project X is officially now two and one in RWA, defeating two, not one, but two staples in Jason Gorey and of course last month, Daniel Weeds. I swear. You might be angry about it, Doc. You might be angry about how it happened, but Elijah Cruz, yeah, he grabbed the face. But that doesn't matter because that's not in the rule books. But that's not in the record books, rather. That is a victory.